Hello, welcome to this short demonstration overview of how to use Digimat to calculate uh, engineering constants for fibre reinforced materials. Uh, Digimat is an advanced materials modelling application from MSC Software that is available within the MSC1 um, token licensing solution. Um, as you can see, there's a number of different modules, um, things for simulating additive manufacturing, for example, things for mapping material properties over from, for example, uh, injection molding simulation to a, an FE model. Um, what we're going to look at today is the difference between Digimat MF using the mean field homogenization method and Digimat FE, which uses an FE analysis to generate material constants. So firstly, we're looking at Digimat MF. Um, fairly simple GUI. And what we do is we add an analysis to it. Uh, we can accept the default name um, for the purposes of this. And then because it's a two-phase composite, we need to define two materials. So material one is epoxy, and it's elastic, and it's isotropic. And we validate there, and then we enter the material properties. So type those in and hit create and then I need to add a second material so my second material is glass and again that's elastic and isotropic and I'll enter my material properties for the glass like that okay next step down is to the microstructure and what I'm going to model this as is a 60% uh, glass filled long fiber unidirectional material. So, to do that, I stick with the generic microstructure. And the first phase is going to be the matrix. So, phase type is matrix, and I choose the material that I predefined, create that, and then I right click and add another phase, which will be uh, GF for glass fiber, continuous fibers, and I choose the glass material, hit validate. And what I want to do is make it 60% by mass. So I say 0.6 mass fraction, hit create there. Um, because all I'm trying to do is get the, the equivalent stiffness, um, I all I need to do is define a loading here. Um, so I can pretty much accept the defaults and hit create. And then I can run my simulation. So it's just some simple questions and as quickly as that it has done the calculation. So if I click on stiffness in the results and go to engineering constants you can see it's calculated the, uh, the three principal stiffnesses, it's calculated six Poisson's ratios and it's calculated three uh, shear terms and the global density. So as quickly as that I've generated my material properties that I can take forward to use in either a, a 3D orthotropic solid FE model or a, uh, a thick shell model. Uh, and these can be used, uh, it's, it's solver agnostic, it could be used for, for Nastran, for Mark, for Ditran, or it could be used for, for example, ANSYS or Abacus or, or Hyperworks, one of, one of the other solvers. Um, that's a good first approximation. If you want to get into more detail about the uh, the way in which your your fabrics are or your, your materials are defined, for example, using a fabric, then you need to look at um, Digimat FE. I'm not going to go through this one live because some of the steps um, can take a, a couple of minutes. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through one that I've already defined. So obviously the GUI is basically identical and we, we add an analysis and we work our way down here. So I define the glass and the epoxy in exactly the same way. My microstructure, in this instance, um, what I can do, um, you're basically defining a fabric where you choose the matrix and the, the yarn, so you can have different yarns in different directions. Um, your yarns are defined in terms of linear density and the, uh, the, the cross-sectional dimensions uh, and the individual fiber dimensions here. Um, so back in the microstructure, um, we can define the braiding angle, the count, um, and then we can play around with the weave pattern 
to decide how this thing is woven together. Um, that will take us forward next to building um, a geometry model. So it actually produces uh, 3D um, parasolid bodies um, that it will then go on to mesh to show you the, the, uh, the matrix and the fibers, how, how it's generated that. If I look at the mesh, there's two options for the mesh. There's a conforming tetra mesh where it um, throws a, a tetrahedral mesh on the fibers and on the, the, the resin. That um, gets harder and harder to do the more complicated your um, microstructure is. So what we often use is this voxel based meshing. And what we do with that is we define um, the number of elements um, along the X, the Y, and then through the thickness. Uh, in this case, I've got 100 by 100 by 30. Um, and then if I go into the visualization settings and hide the matrix there, you can see what it's done is it's basically calculated which elements intersect with which bodies and uh, applied the material for the, the, uh, the largest proportion. So if, if an element is 60% is inside the matrix and 40% inside one of the, the, the yarns, then it's assumed to be made of matrix material. Uh, you can increase the fidelity by increasing the number of elements here, but that obviously has a knock-on effect on the, uh, the runtime. So moving down under loadings, um, what I can do is I can tick a single box here for automatic properties evaluation and then choose which properties I want to have evaluated. So what it will do is build six separate FE jobs with the appropriate boundary conditions uh, and run six separate FE analyses to generate these. So I can choose which ones I want, but um, generally speaking, you're going to tick the box for all to calculate all of the properties. We then use the, the solution um, to create a new job. And what that does is it spawns six different FE jobs uh, to use the Mark, MSC Mark FEA solver, um, and runs those jobs and then extracts the key results to be able to calculate the, uh, the stiffness properties that you're looking for. As you can see, each of these takes um, a just over a minute to run, um, sometimes minute 10 seconds, something like that, um, combined with the time it takes to, to create the jobs. Um, the, the total runtime for, for all six jobs is about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, so once that's run, the results are imported automatically and we can go and we can look at the engineering constants. So you can see, again, it's calculated the three principal stiffnesses. It's calculated the six Poisson's ratios and it's calculated the three shears and the density. So it's a, it's a longer route through to get an answer, but it's a, a more a higher fidelity answer because it's using the FE to represent the, um, the changes in direction locally of the fabric. And again, these materials can be taken um, and plugged into to any FE code of your choice. Um, and used for a, a 3D orthotropic material representation. Again, also these microstructures, you have um, all sorts of options here. Um, you can have, um, again, generic to do a UD, you can make foams, you can do, um, you can do all sorts with it. So you can have voids, so you can make, you know, foams, you can have inclusions, you can have strands, etc. Um, so lo lots and lots of options. Um, big advantage of this is to, to generate those material properties if you are finding yourself needing to do something that needs a 3D orthotropic material. The properties aren't awfully, often readily available or the, um, the, the uncommon terms, let's say, are approximated or in some cases even guessed at uh, and not always available from material suppliers. Um, and the testing can be quite expensive to fully char characterise such a material. So having Digimat in your, your bag of uh, tricks with, with MSC1 means you have a tool where you can produce pretty good material representations very quickly um, to use in more advanced FEA analysis. If you have any questions about this or you'd like to see more or understand more, please uh, get in touch with DTE and we'll see what we can do to help. Thank you.